Licenses and certifications, how many are there? Which ones do I need? Let's talk about it. What's going on everybody? Thank you for tuning in to this little HVAC Mentor Minute. I'm AK and let's dive right into the question. Licenses and certifications for the heating and air trade. How many are there and which ones do I need or don't need? This is a really broad topic, but I'm gonna try to do it in a short amount of time. One, EPA Type 608. Your Type 608 certification is a federally mandated card for you to possess as a heating and air technician that is going to handle and use refrigerants. This license slash certification is required no matter what state you reside in. It demonstrates to the EPA that you possess the competence and the skills and knowledge required to handle refrigerants in a way that's both safe for you as the handler as well as safe for the environment. There are several different types to this license. You can select one or all of them. If you do all of them, you will get what's known as a universal license. Just get the universal license. There is no reason to lazy out and get just one or two types. Get the whole thing and you're covered no matter where your career ends up taking you. Okay, beyond the 608 card, after that point, your licensing requirements in the trade is going to 100% be dictated by the state and locale you live in personally. Some states require no licensing whatsoever to do heating and air work. Some states require a whole slew of licenses and have compartmentalized the trade into many different facets that require tested certification for each. For me here in Kentucky, it's somewhere in the middle. We don't have a hundred different licenses to get, but we do require a journeyman license to perform heating and air work in a professional capacity and you need a master license to be a contractor and pull permits. Many states do have a similar process as we do here in Kentucky. And in that case, you will be required to have a certain duration of time working in the trade that's verifiable and also take a written and or skills-based test. In my home state here, two years of verifiable work experience is required before you can test for your journeyman license. After that, another two years is required with a journeyman license active before you can test and get your master license. The biggest point here is to make sure you check with the state you live in to find out exactly what licenses are required by law. Certifications are a different ballpark. Certifications are not necessarily required to perform work in your given state, but certifications add bulk to your resume. They expand your knowledge base and they make you much more marketable when you're looking at getting new work and they just make you a better technician. So what I will tell you, if, not, if you take nothing else from this video, is get everything. Get everything that is offered or available to you, whether you think you're gonna use it tomorrow or not. Anything you can do in this trade to step up your knowledge level is going to come back to you down the road. HVAC specifically is a perishable skill, but that's not the worst of it. On top of the fact that existing knowledge is perishable when you don't use it, the, the trade is also changing so drastically, so frequently, and not slowing down that not only do you need to maintain the knowledge you've always had, but you need to constantly be getting ahead of the curve and learning new things. Most new ideas and technologies in the HVAC trade are accompanied by an opportunity to get some sort of certification to handle it, to use it, to know it, to talk about it. So if I could sum up this whole video in two words, if you're given opportunities to get licenses or certifications, get it. I appreciate you guys watching. Stay safe out there. We'll see you on the next one. For more information on how to kickstart your HVAC career today, contact RSI at www.refrigerationschool.com.